Hey everybody, I'm Ryan and you're watching 60 Cycle Hum and today I'm going to show you the Navigator by Jennings Guitars. This is their stripped down meat and potatoes, no frills, kind of classic T-style loadout guitar uh, that comes in at a more affordable price point than all their other guitars. Typically Jennings guitars range from the high 2000s to the low 2000s. This comes in at $1,500. So that makes it kind of competitive against, you know, USA made but factory produced guitars from the bigger brands. Let's talk about all the details and then I'll get into uh, my deeply emotional personal opinion filled review after that. We'll start at the headstock and work our way all the way down to the butt end of the guitar. All right, so the headstock. The headstock is your standard Jennings guitar headstock shape. Uh, it has a beveled out cutaway here that you could pay a little extra and have painted a contrasting color if you want. And that would give you a little bit of a slimmer sort of visual flow here if that's what you prefer. I honestly really like this headstock. I'm a big fan of this more modern style take on a headstock. Um, there's gonna be a lot of people in the comment section down below complaining that it's not a Telecaster style headstock. I think Telecaster style headstocks, like the classic Telecaster headstock is weird and stupid looking. And now that I've uh, started a flame war in the comment section, we'll move on from there. I just, I think if you played guitars for years and years and years, and then a Telecaster came out and you had never seen it before, you'd be like, what is up with that headstock? It's so weird and lumpy. It looks like a snake swallowed an egg. What the heck is going on with that thing? All right, the tuners on this thing, they're Clusons and they're really interesting. They're, you know, they're nice, firm, modern style tuner, no issues there, but they have this kind of like, vintage art deco sort of thing going on on the back of the case. They have a split shaft, which I'm a big fan of. I love split shaft tuners because I like to tweak, you know, like pick guards and pickups and all sorts of other things like that. And when you take off the strings with a regular modern style tuner, a lot of the times that string's not going back on. You've twisted it up a bunch of times getting it off the tuner. With a split shaft, you can just pull that little pigtail off of the tuner and then slide it right back on when you're done with your uh, your modifications. Okay, the nut. The nut is a bone nut, and it's cut in a way where if you pick up one of these guitars, you see it in person, you immediately get the vibe that this is a boutique guitar, that this was, you know, small batch, handmade, someone who really cared about it was, was cutting it, because it doesn't have the factory feel sort of thing going on. It's nice and smooth on the edges. Looks like someone hand polished this thing. Uh, it's cut very well. The strings are the correct height off of the fretboard and the first fret, um, so no issues there. I've had zero tinging and pinging with this nut when I'm tuning the guitar. Uh, really tuning stable, and I do bends like stupid. I bend way more than I should, and it's just been a great nut, so no issues there. The fretwork on this guitar is fantastic. I'm gonna just flat out just say it. I think this is the best fretwork of any other guitar I have in my collection or I've ever had in my collection. I wish every guitar I owned had this fretwork. It's just nice and smooth on the edges, really uh, like round polish on them, but not so round that the fret disappears. There's a tactile response there. You can feel every single fret. They stand up nice and tall. They're a modern kind of tall fret versus, you know, like a vintagey flat worn out sort of fret. They ring true across the entire fretboard, no dead spots, no places where you're grinding when you're bending or anything like that. They're all really nice, well-dressed frets, nice and smooth, like I said. Maple neck, obviously, on this guitar here. Uh, no uh, truss adjustment on the headstock. You have to get into the truss through the heel if you're a big uh, truss tweaker. I don't know if there's people out there who are always tweaking their truss rod, but that's something to think about. I Vaguely remember Chad Jennings saying that he just prefers the look of not having a trust adjustment up there. It's an aesthetics choice. Um, so that's something to debate in the comment section down below. The neck, there are two different neck shapes to choose from when you order one of these. There's a modern style neck, which is uh, you know smaller and faster. And then there's a 50s chunky vintage sort of option, which is what this guitar has. And I gotta say, I love this thick chunky neck. It's kind of like that baseball sort of experience, baseball bat sort of experience. It just fills the hand. And it feels like an old friend. I love that neck shape, fantastic. I wish there was some way I could illustrate the actual shape of it here in the video. 
but it's just nice and thick, nice and full without feeling like it's gonna impede your playing in any sort of way. Moving down to the body, you have a nice modern option here, nice modern feature. You have a cutaway uh, for more comfortable fret access versus just a big, you know, sort of block neck heel there. So I like that addition to this design. It's not just, you know, an off the shelf Telecaster style body going on. Um, single ply pit guard here, kind of flat, kind of classy. I'm actually a fan of single ply pit guards. Uh, I've got my Duo Sonic up on the wall up here. I don't think you can see it in the shot. And it came with a single ply pit guard. When I was a kid, when I got this thing, I thought like, ah, that's dumb. I don't like the single ply because more expensive guitars have you know, multi-ply or whatever. I've really come to appreciate it over the years. And I think there's just something really classy about having this hard visual edge without the actual, the extra little stripes and stuff like that. I like the more simple look as I age. The body is swamp ash with a really thin finish on it. It's so thin that the finish has sucked up into the wood grain and you get this really nice kind of natural, light, airy feel. Uh, the guitar is really nice and light and resonant. I don't know if that, the finish has anything to do with that. People will debate that for days and days and days, I'm sure. Um, standard Telecaster style hardware here. I don't know the, the make or model of the bridge here as far as the brand goes, but it's got compensated saddles for better intonation. You can, of course, string through mount the strings or you can top load them. That's a pretty standard feature. Simple, basic, classic control layout here. Three, uh, three position switch, volume and tone. And then let's talk about the pickups. The pickups are McNelly's. Uh, Tim McNelly is a, a uh, friend of the show here. Uh, we like Tim, we like his stuff. I've got other guitars with his stuff in it. I was excited to find out that uh, his pickups were in this guitar. Here's where I'm gonna transition into my personal feelings and review of this guitar. Um, it just nails the classic Telecaster sound. Like when I close my eyes and I think of what a Telecaster sounds like or is supposed to sound like, this guitar does it. And it feels the way that a Telecaster is supposed to feel. It's twangy, it's bright with like a, like a bright mid kind of push to it. It just hits compressors exactly how you expect a Telecaster to. You throw a little reverb on there and it's just beautiful. It's clear, it's articulate. This is like the quintessential Telecaster experience with this guitar. And I'm gonna get into a little bit of inside baseball. That's why I'm keeping this thing around. Uh, I had the option to either do a paid demo of this guitar, which is what I do. I do paid demos. Uh, or take it as like a product placement sort of trade sort of deal thing here, or just return it if I you know wasn't into it. And very quickly I realized that I need to have this guitar in my quiver for demo purposes, for playing purposes. I didn't have any other guitar that hit the Telecaster thing so dead on as this guitar does. And so it became a very easy decision for me to be like, let me keep this guitar. Uh, we'll do, you know, like a product placement sort of trade for content sort of deal. I mean, this is very inside baseball, like I mentioned. Uh, so yeah, no money was exchanged. It's just the guitar. And you guys are gonna be seeing a lot of it because I love this thing. I've already been playing it in demos a lot just because it's an easy choice to make. And if, if there's a good review that I can give of, of a guitar, that's it, is that it is an easy choice for me to make to have this guitar in my quiver because it just plays true. It's like, it's like ringing a bell. You've heard that phrase. It's just so easy to play. Every note rings true across the fretboard. Zero tuning issues it hits that classic sound. And that's something I wrestle with as a demo guy is like having guitars, you know, in the shot as I'm playing that are delivering a sound that people expect that guitar to sound like. This delivers the sound people expect from a Telecaster. And like I said, it, it just made it an easy decision for me. So. That's my uh, my heartfelt personal review of this thing. I don't typically go into this sort of rant with stuff, but I figured it was a, a valuable perspective to share about this guitar. And it's, you know, my 
my stamp of approval on it, my official stamp of approval on this guitar. So uh, take it however you want to. Question my intentions down in the comments below if you want. <laughs> why don't I uh, why don't I turn it on and show off what the pickups sound like? I've been sitting here just gushing about this thing. Uh, I've got no effects on right now. Here is a big open chord on the bridge pickup. Like I said, twang for days. Here is the neck pickup. I like that sound. I like that bending into a note sound on this guitar. Here's the middle position before I forget. Like I said, that's just the sound. That's the sound of a Telecaster. It nails it. I feel like I don't ever need another Telecaster again, honestly. Like this just hits that sound. So great. All right, well, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me a rude and nasty comment. Stay tuned as I play out with some kind of noodly nonsense here. Uh, I might have even started this video with some kind of noodling. I don't know. We'll see. Thanks for watching, guys. Later.